some alleged first experiments in editing human embryos uh, have come from China. In the journal Protein and Cell from lead author uh, Jun Ju Huang from y Sun Yat-sen University and this paper was actually rejected from uh, Nature and Science, two report, uh, reputable science journals for ethical reasons, so they didn't really explain why, as it is not in the nature of these publications to explain that. Uh, but basically, it looks like if it is to be believed in this paper, which again, I will say it's a little dubious, uh, that there have been experiments in place to, to so-called edit and replace uh, defective genes in embryos, which has ignited a bit of an ethical furor. Yeah, I think rightfully so. I think using this type of technology to treat people, do things like gene therapy once you're already a human is one mm -hmm. thing. But what it comes down to is this is within the human germline, which basically means that as they edit this DNA, that DNA is going to get passed down through the generations. Let's say that these embryos did develop into humans. That edit that they did will go on, and they don't necessarily know what type of side effects it could have. And I mean, obviously that's why you do experimentation, but this idea of introducing a new gene into the human population is dangerous, ethically very um, iffy. Yeah, the, the technology that they're using, it's called CRISPR, and it's not the only one that does this effect. I mean, you have different technologies and different techniques that can do it. RNA interference is one of them. but. Uh, basically, even the inventor of this technology, which is being used, there are labs that are currently testing and researching human applications for this technology in the U.S., in the U.K., oh, I didn't and in other. It's already in place. It is already in place. We had a story recently that we talked about mosquitoes. I don't know if you guys have seen it out there, but we had a story about them using this technology to hopefully prevent malaria oh, and dengue fever. Oh, to remove the gene that would make them want to speak. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So it either would make the females infertile or it would make them resistant to the parasite that carried the dengue fever and malaria. But even the inventor of these techniques mm -hmm. held a moratorium recently and they advocated to not use this with human research yet because we are jumping the gun. It's way too early for us to be using this technology with, it's not reliable, it's not, we don't know what the effects could be. What if these genes interact with a species that it's not intended and they carry on to then and then a new species dies because of the result of us using this it, it's so complicated and we are so new to it mm -hmm. that it's crazy that people would do it right now. Yeah, I think it can be used for absolute good. It can be used to help treat diseases, to you know, help prevent malaria, things like that. But it's like this power that scientists yeah. wield and there could be a mad scientist out there doing something not good with it. So we need to be very responsible, go at this slowly, steadily, see where it takes us. Another way this CRISPR is being used is uh, in the attempts to bring back the mammoth. Woolly mammoth to oh, edit the elephant genes, put in some mammoth genes in there, and then see what they get. So even that has a lot of ethical issues surrounding it. They're all fascinating, but we need to be careful. Yeah. Um, so this is allegedly planned and underway right now, the test on sperm, egg, and embryos uh, to see if this works. If it could remove such genetic defects as cystic fibrosis or uh, certain breast cancer genes, would it be worth pursuing or is the are the ramifications too high? I think right now it's just so soon. It's too early. We do not know what the ramifications and the possible consequences are of this type of manipulation at the genetic level. Mm -hmm. Even in plants and, and mosquitoes, as we can see, or the mammoth, we still don't understand. They did use non-viable embryos, so they're not using you know, embryos that are going to develop into a full-grown adult human being and then mm -hmm. be able to reproduce. But that is the goal of these experiments, if not why even use humans and why affect the germline, like Phil said. I just think that it's one of those things where we know so little, this is a sci-fi movie. This is an experiment gone wrong, and then all of a sudden, you know, the world is at a lot. On Did the other hand, that's the same Gattaca. thing that people argue against GMOs. You know, they'll say that as we edit some of these <sighs> things, like plants or like animals, what if that's an experiment gone wrong? So it's this kind of fear tactic built within when these scientists doing it, they are looking at this as, hey, what if we could make it so the humans don't have cancer, this so particular where, where type of cancer? Where, where's the line? Well, but, but this is a technology that has been in place and techniques that have been being, you know, has been researched for the last maybe five, six years. When, we come, when it comes to GMOs, human beings have been domesticating and through artificial selection have been manipulating plants and animals from 12,000 BC. So it's, it's one of those things where I feel like we have a much bigger grasp on 
uh, the ramifications, maybe not on a mass scale, but when it comes to controlled environments with GMOs. And we know what a tomato enriched with vitamin D is going to do and what its shelf life is going to be. And we don't know what this is going to do. That's my, my vote. Yes, you know, to be fair, it isn't really an equal comparison uh, on that measure. But it, it's still, some of the ethical questions still swirl. Yeah. I guess we are kind of in, where, where do we stand on this? Um, not, I, I don't know. And who know. dictates this? Who and dictates who, the who science? Who decides? Who decides? And, and the ethics of it, not just yeah. the science, but who, who gets to do it and who doesn't. I think right now our society is clearly not ready for it. If we're struggling with GMOs with things like a tomato, uh, we're going <laughs> to struggle with, with doing editing a to a being. human human being. So mm -hmm. I think let's go slow and steady. Let's get this science better and then see if it can be used for good in a very controlled way. Not to make all these babies with blue eyes or taller or whatever. Designer babies? Designer babies. No designer babies, just if we can cure disease, let's take a look at so it. So if you were to be able to choose if you could have a designer baby, Phil's a solid no. Christina is a <laughs> no. no. Kim doesn't want Let babies. Let babies be. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about this? Are, are the ethical implications too high to be experimenting on human embryos at this point to have uh, so-called designer babies or to remove defective genes? Let us know below in the comments and please be sure to subscribe for more.